Welcome to MarkHallJenna.com or YouTube.com slash MarkHallJenna. I did promise a how to film HD videos and I am here to share exactly that. Today we are going to be talking about the technical stuff, the thing that happens behind the scenes. I know that a lot of you are curious about how to create or how to film HD videos and so we decided to do this and it took us quite a while because it was a little cha challenging trying to figure out how to share it with you guys. We'll be sharing you one, the gear that we use, uh, the listing for the prices and where you can get it will be found on my blog which I will link in the description box. Two, we will show you how we set it up in a small space so it's perfect for those of you who don't have a lot of room and if you don't have a lot of open space to set up your gear to film an HD video. Three, we will also be sharing with you how we post process, but we, we will not go deeper into that, but we are going to tackle that a little bit. Let's start with the first gear that we use for the videos, and it's the microphone. It's called a lav mic, and it's what you see here. And the purpose of the lav mic is to isolate the audio. When you look at my previous videos, you can tell that there's a lot of noise and it's very distracting. But in the past two videos that I did, I used this lav mic and you can tell that the voice is focused and it's purely my voice. You can't really hear a lot of outside noises, which is perfect because when I'm talking in the video and I'm explaining something, it's really helpful to just kind of hear my voice and not some annoying buzzing sound. A lav mic is available um, online and we will be linking it to you in the blog post. We will be showing you how we set up this, the stuff that we have here in a bit and we are going to be using the iPhone. So forgive us for the quality and probably bad lighting, but we are going to try our best to explain to you how it works. But we're not professionals, we're not calling ourselves like legit experts on this. We are merely sharing with you what we do in order to come up with the videos that I have come up with so far. And we're not imposing this on you, it's just a little bit of tip for all of you who want to come up with better videos for your YouTube channel. So this is my setup. We have there a hair light white background that's pinned to the wall, two daylight lamps with the umbrellas, and it's connected to the stand, obviously. We have my camera, the chair where I sit, and we have the reflector that I use for a more luminous effect. And my microphone is attached directly to this this wire right here. The wire right here is attached to me, and then you can see that it is attached directly to the camera. That's how it works. It's a little crowded, especially when I do tutorials because I have to use a table and put it in between the camera and the chair, but ideal. So this is how our setup looks like. Excuse my outfit. So before we even start, let me just say that this is not my thing. I am only the person who sits down and films. This is mostly my husband's, but I'm going to pretend I know this stuff. Okay, so I have a cheat sheet here that has the names of all the stuff I'm going to be showing you. But let's start with the easiest one. This is the background that we used. It's just a typical white sheet and we pinned it to the wall because we don't have a white wall. If you do, you could use that but make sure there are no stains or, or um, distractions from it. And then we just pinned it there. This is our background because a white background is ideal to film a clear HD video especially if you're doing makeup or different tutorials or if you're going to be talking in front of the camera sharing information it's really cool to just input um, text at the background now we have here the chair that i sit on when we film and as you can tell the space isn't very uh, abundant it's housed in a small room so that's why we're we're very crowded in here but beside that is this boom it's a boom you guys do, do I know what that means? Not really. This is the hair light. So this is, let me see, the chroma lighting 160 LED light lamp for camera video camcorder hot shoe filter. Wow. Uh, we'll list that down in the blog so you can just check that out. But this is the hair light. This is what lights my hair, makes it look shiny, even if it's not. You know, it's all the illusion. But um, it really gives a nice effect, um, especially when it lights up the back of my head. This is the Photography Studio Softbox Photo Boom Arm Sandbag. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the boom. And over here at the end is the sandbag. So the sandbag comes with the boom, and I think this retails for $26.91. We will be listing it in the, in the blog. 
So this is what carries the hair light. You can actually attach something else there like a mic or another source of light. So let's move on over here. You see two lighting equipment. Let's start with the stand. So the stand is called the Ravelli ALS Full 10 Inch Air Cushion Light Stand. And the reason why my husband decided to purchase this is because it's air cushion and that means, he explained this to me you guys. This means that if this thing, this lock fails, it doesn't slide down. It, it, it stays up, but I'm not gonna demonstrate because then I'll mess everything up. But yes, that is the reason. And now let's move on to the bulb here and that is the 110 volt, 150 watt, 65 watt, 5500 Kelvin photo bulb studio. Something that is used mainly for photography, in my opinion, is um, the reflector. But we do use this when we film because it just adds to the luminosity of the video. And this is the 5-in-1 reflector. We will also be linking this to you guys. There's a gold side and then there's the silver side. It's very useful, but mainly it's used for photography. But we use it when we if film. For all the equipment I use to film my videos, it may be different per person, but that's all I use and I just want to stress that they are not at all super expensive like when people think when people think about filming equipment they probably think it's gonna cost a lot of money but go to my blog post everything is listed down there including the price and I'll probably link where you can get them probably I'm not sure but definitely check out my blog post a camera I get asked a lot about what camera I use and the lenses I use a Lumix GH1 for filming and we have a Nikon D300 for product pictures with this uber huge lens that I don't really know what it is. I forgot the name, but I will list it also in the blog post. Anyway, for filming we have two different lenses. The first one is a prime lens and the prime lens lets in a lot of light. Um, even when you zoom in it's still going to be bright. Uh, but the problem with it is it's a little too zoomed in, so even if you zoom it all out, it's still going to be too zoomed in. So if you want a wider view, it's not going to be very helpful, but it can't move a lot because the focus is manual, so you're going to have to stay put in one certain area or else it's going to be out of focus. The other lens is a 14 to 42 millimeter lens, if I got that right, and that's what I'm using right now. So the problem with this is that the more you zoom it in, the aperture closes or like, you know, that little thing. I'm, I'm talking like a boss, like I know this stuff. It kind of gets smaller and the smaller it is, the less light comes in, so the more lighting you need. Um, so that is why I have two huge daylight lamps on me. Um, or else you're going to see everything behind me. For the editing software, I use the Power Director, Cyberlink Power Director. I forgot what version, but I use that instead of those fancy uh, Final Cut Pro or whatever fancy editing softwares that are available out there that has these really cool and high-end effects because I'm a really really bad learner when it comes to those kind of stuff and once I get used to something I get used to it that's it that's what I'll use I wanted to try Sony Vegas before because you can do a lot with it but every time I open the app it just gives me a really bad headache I don't know it's just the site just gives me a headache it's just no problem with maybe you're using Windows Media um, that thing, the Windows Media Editor, I think. The problem with that is that it lags when you're editing high quality videos, um, like videos from DSLRs and stuff, so that's one of the downsides. And when you render it, you can't render it like Super HD, like 1080 pixels. So when you're rendering videos, like for PowerDirector, in my case, I render it as MP4, and it has an option for YouTube, and I use the 1080 pixel option. So it renders it in a really, really high quality, but it's not that big of a file. And for tips, when filming videos, get the right equipment. If you're really serious with your YouTube videos, if you really want to invest, all you need is proper lighting and a decent camera and a decent editing software. To those of you watching this and who are also planning to create their own YouTube channel, do let me know and let me know in the comments what your username is because I will check out and subscribe to you guys. And I hope that you will do the same as well if you haven't subscribed yet. And don't hesitate to share this video to friends or people you know or people you think are interested in filming HD videos because this might be helpful. And also thank you for being so patient. This was a struggle. It was very challenging for me to do this, but I wanted to share 
um, this with you guys. So I hope you like it, and I would really love it if you give it a thumbs up. And um, yeah, don't forget to comment your questions if I missed anything. If you have any curiosities, don't hesitate to comment. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Stay tuned for my next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.